We're back talking more about mass airflow filtering, so stick around. Welcome to part two of mass airflow filtering. If you did not watch the first video, we did some test and tune stuff on this weird mass airflow, air mass filter that's underneath dynamic. I'll throw a link up in the corner. You'll wanna watch that because it was interesting. This mass airflow, air mass filter, once again, it is a tongue twister, a mouthful. You know, it is filtering the data from the mass airflow sensor. If we mouse over it again, we can look at and say, this filter is used to filter the MAF air mass in response to the MAP or TPS failure, which we're not doing. Obviously, as I said, you can't fail the TPS. It'll go in limp mode. MAP, it, not really a viable option on the LT4. If we were doing this on the L83, we could just unplug the MAP sensor, but I don't think the thing will actually run with it like that. It'd be interesting to try that out but it'll also use to filter the air mass whenever the engine rpm is greater than the dynamic rpm disable which we do to put it into high speed mode well in the previous video we tried a couple different settings and it didn't run it has a range from zero to one and uh the factory default at least on this setup is like 0 0.057 or something like that we tried a one and it would run but real bad tried a zero wouldn't even start try to 0.5 which is halfway on the scale and it would run but real bad once again and then we ended up taking the stock value and doubling it and what it seems to do is as we are filtering this data basically the data is coming in from the mass airflow sensor as a frequency the higher the number the more readings that it's taking in a shorter span of time whereas the lower number it kind of puts a wider filter on the data and says okay grab a data from this time period and use that to calculate what the frequency average in that time period now keep in mind that time period is still going to be uh, milliseconds in this case but as we did a, a wider number or a bigger number we got to one it was just taking every single snapshot of the data and we could see that on the data logs because this number would bounce around a lot more on our mass airflow and we were seeing it bounce you know up to 10 cells and that's not normal doubling the data though it got it down to the point where it was only bouncing in two cells and it got me thinking what if we did the opposite instead of doubling the data we tried to take it down to a zero it wouldn't run because the filter was zero what if we took it down to like 0 0.001 would it run there and so what we're going to try on this one and theoretically that should be the widest amount of filter available on the mass airflow filter and i don't think it's going to be a viable way of tuning it but it is worth checking out so we can do this, let's go 0 .0001. Now uh, Let's just do 001. We don't need to go too crazy. We're gonna load that in and see what it'll do. So we're back to the condition that we were in where apparently if we filter too much of the data, the car just doesn't wanna start and run. It, it's running a little bit longer than it was beforehand, but that just means that we're onto something. So if we know that we were 0 0.05, let's go ahead and half that down to 0 0.025. Let's write that in and see if it'll do it at that level. Essentially what we're doing is we're trying to find the upper and lower boundaries of where we can actually adjust this value and still get data back. And then we can use that to set us a baseline of where we start kind of playing with the, uh, the, the values in between those two, seeing how it affects our data as we do data loggings and whether or not there's a benefit to actually tweaking this number. Theoretically, I think that we're gonna want a higher value. Now, as I said, whenever we got closer to like 0.1, uh, it would still run. 0.5, it would not, but maybe around 0.25, we start finding a happy area where the mass airflow sensor is responding quicker, and that's where we want to be at. Okay, we're up and running at 0 0.01, so 0 0.001 was too low. Actually, what did I say? We're at 0 0.025, I believe, which is going to be half of what the stock value is. And what I'm expecting to see from this is, is very, very slow data capture on here. So let's go ahead log this thing in and in fact i can tell right away that it is quite a bit slower look at our mass airflow reading here which is just really rock steady which is interesting that's because it is taking a wider window 
and averaging that data for that wider window. So we're gonna try and drive to the house on this setting and see if it'll even let us drive. I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna struggle during any kind of transient modes because it's gonna be trying to rely more on the VE table. We're gonna see some bad data cross over into the VE table. The interesting thing about it is though, I think we're gonna get better data from the mass airflow table that is gonna be a better representation of what our actual error is on our mass airflow table right now, which is within half a percent, which is spot on in our world. So we're stuck behind the school bus here. I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of a wrap up up here because I've noticed just right away, with the number being lower as we talked about, it seems like the filter window is wider. Uh, and, and even so, like small throttle adjustments, I'm seeing it jump cells a lot more on the, the data logger where it's not necessarily capturing data at certain hertz that it would if it were uh, acquiring the data quicker. So look at it this way. It's kind of like right now we're collecting 10 hits per second where normally it would collect 50 hits per second. And then if we're going higher than the set, uh, the default number of the 575 or whatever, whenever we we're doing 0.1, that we were maybe collecting 100 data hits per second that the ECU is using to process and calculate the mass airflow portion of uh, the air measurement to do all the fueling on here. And so, what's the takeaway on this? That's the big thing. Like, what what is what have we learned from this? Well, for one, we don't want to necessarily go any lower on there because we are going to be missing data points. We're going to have a harder time filling in the graph. Theoretically, what we want to do is nudge that number up from the, the stock set point of uh, 0 0.057 or whatever your stock point set point is, we wanna nudge that number up, maybe a hundredth at a time until we kind of find a good area where we're collecting more data than we normally do. We're leaning heavier on the math. We're seeing more data. Now, the problem is the higher up that we go in that number, the more errant data that we're gonna see because the mass airflow, the whole design of it it has to have some filtering in it because of the way it uses a hot wire style mass airflow sensor. And we have to filter some of the change data in there because it's going to overshoot. What it's doing is it's trying to maintain a temperature on that hot wire by adjusting the frequency to it. And, and in order to maintain that temperature, every once in a while, it might overshoot that temperature a little bit. We don't want it to catch that data. It's gonna be so fast though, that as long as we don't get carried away on the filter by jacking that number up high, we're going to be able to theoretically bring in more data from the sensor itself for calibrating the airflow error quicker than if we were to leave it stock. So when in doubt, yeah, leave it stock. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong. We still have not proven that there's a benefit to raising that number up. I can tell you right now, there is not a benefit to lowering that number. And so the question is gonna be, does raising that number up help us on the mass airflow tuning? And that is a question for another time. We'll have to do a third series in our third video in this series. But if you've tried this out, if you've been following along, hit up the comments down below. Let me know how it's working for you. I'd be interested to get feedback from you guys because that's how we all learn. Thanks for stopping by the garage. You guys know the drill. ABT, always be tuning.